What are you expecting? Well, I'm expecting a slight beat because they rarely miss, and the key will be in the guidance. They're usually conservative. I think, um, as Sarah said, this is not one of their most important quarters for sales, but it is an important thing to get the quarterly results where they talk about what they're going to do with their huge, massive cash position. They already increased their dividend this year, so everybody's going to be focused on how much they will increase their stock buyback. And of course, all of that winds up having to do with what do you do in terms of its uh, valuation. Now, we spoke earlier with Abhai Lambda of Mizuho uh, and talked about the valuation trap and what he sees for Apple. When we look at uh, last six, seven years, Apple is at its uh, highest multiple uh, currently on an earnings basis. And that's partly because there's a lot of excitement about iPhone 8 and what they can do with iPhone 8. Uh, we think uh, we, we could be disappointed with the iPhone 8, initial shipments of the iPhone 8, and uh, that would make holding this type of evaluation a little bit harder. Dan, you own Apple, so how do you feel about that? Well, I kind of disagree a little bit. I think the iPhone 8 is going to be pretty exciting. You've got the fingertip sensor. You've got the OLED screen in terms of the new display screens. You've got the uh, ability to charge a phone wirelessly. And, you know, if we go into this quarter, we're looking for about 40 million iPhones next quarter, which will be the September quarter, about 47 million. And then all of a sudden it really ramps up going in that December quarter, looking for about 85 million iPhones. So we're looking for iPhones to nearly double with the release of the iPhone 8 and also the anniversary phone. The other thing that's critical too is that average selling prices are expected to increase substantially with these new phones. So I think it's, uh, it's gonna be very similar to the iPhone 4 release that we had back in 2010, 2011 in terms of its timing. So we're very excited about the iPhone 8, the anniversary phone, and we're excited about Apple going forward. Dan, we're trying to explore the, the price elasticity of an iPhone. If it goes up to $1,000, what happens to demand? Well, you know, it's interesting. We used to have these conversations about Apple three, four years ago about what they were going to do in India, what they were going to do in China in terms of bringing down the cost of their average selling prices to kind of match some of these low producers. But I think Apple at this point is like kind of like the Mercedes-Benz of the car manufacturing industry. Um, they're looking to push prices up. and. You know, they may even go above $1,000 a phone on some of their newer phones. So, you know, you got 600 million people out there that use their phones, and there's always going to be people that want the highest and the best and the most expensive. So I think there is some ability for them to push prices up on phones and really drive iPhone revenues, not so much on unit volume, but on actual ASPs.